Hi everyone, welcome back to This Week Belongs to Pam and you need to help me finish all of my Magical Readathon TBR. Okay, I know I look kind of rough, not kind of, really rough, <laughs> but I took the day off work today because I was feeling really, really unwell. Now we have to talk about Magical Readathon. So I have been pretty good with Magical Readathon. I've actually already finished one of my callings, which is the Story Weaver calling, but I am an overachiever and I have another calling that I want to finish, which is the Eldia Excavationist. I have already started that. I finish my first book for that which is Dear Medusa so that is for conjuration read a book with an orange cover I have two other classes that I need to take which is animal studies and restorations for animal studies the prompt is to read a book with a yellow title on the cover initially I was gonna read a study in drowning because that that looks yellow to me even though it's kind of like goldish. I was gonna read this because this is also the book club pick for Jamie's library but that live show is actually not gonna happen until the end of the month. I have another book club that I'm a part of which is Jan Agaton's Full Moon Book Club and this is the book pick for that and it also has yellow title and the live show for this is next week so I think I'm gonna read this instead of studying drowning for that prompt and then for restoration I have to read a book that can cure slumps I have the thriller here which is First Lie Wins by Ashley Elston but I'm not sure if that's what I want to read I recently got a lot of thrillers is my book unboxing haul up yes my book unboxing haul should be up by the time that this video goes up so if you want to see all of the books that i got recently i will leave a link in the description box it was a really fun video where i kind of went crazy on the books but yeah <laughs> um so for book that in cure slums i honestly will just mood read for this one i think i'm just gonna finish this book first and then see what i'm in the mood for and that will be the book because really with that prompt it's kind of a giveaway because any book can cure slums it just it's just up to you so i would argue mood reading a book in Cure Slum so <laughs> I also finished Sheds That Bind yesterday and this is my book for the lore quest so I had to pick a book with moons on the cover these are the three moons in Alante there's also a moon at the back so I think this works out quite well um, I will talk more about this book maybe later um, I am gonna check what's next for lore quest to see what the prompt will be so my goal is to actually finish all of the prompts for this readathon, for at least for my calling, because I don't know how long the lore quest is gonna be, but I wanna finish all of the two books remaining by the end of this week, so by Sunday. Because next week I have a video project that I'm gonna be working on. I need to put all of my reading time into that project, so I just wanna finish Magical Readathon by the end of this week. I'm getting my breakfast ready and I will See you after I eat and get some caffeine in my system. bookmark I was using the Aurelium Archivist bookmark but that was getting beat up <laughs> so I am using this just Aurelium one and I love that this actually matches with the cover love a matching moment everything I remember from what I've listened so far in the audiobook has been interesting so I'm just gonna read it from the beginning relatable right now the weather was a kind of hot that made her sorry to even be alive that is me right now it is so fucking hot in my last magical readathon vlog i read silver in the bone and one of my major rants was that this artwork like that one and this one made it feel like the characters are so young and it was kind of weird reading about what they were doing and me thinking they're like middle grade young right because this they look middle grade i just found the author note that comes with fairloot editions 
and this is the artwork on that other note and this artwork would have been so much better to put on the cover or at least on the like on the inside page like look at that if that was the end paper i'm like yeah perfect makes sense love the outfit love the hand i forget what it's called this hat has a name <laughs> but this would have been so much better than the middle grade one that we got <laughs> so yeah that's just my rant for silver and gold Hi everyone, it is now 11 in the evening. I don't think I've talked to you. <laughs> um, but I have been reading a lot the entire day. I'm still in sprints with Pam. Well, I'm not with her in a sprint, but I'm joining her sprints. We are on the last sprint. So I thought I would update you on um so let them burn by camilla cole so i am currently at page 120 which i think is about 30 something percent of the way through so i think i could tell you a little bit more about what this book is about in this book we are following farron who is the child empyrean she has direct access to the gods and is able to channel their powers because in this world in their country san iri they have this magical ability to summon astrals which are just i guess projections of their ancestors and use a little bit of power based on that but she's a lot different because she has a direct access to the gods which there's like three gods for their country and that is why they call her the child imperian and she was the key to the revolution that happened five years ago which earned them their independence from langley which is a country a very large country that has colonized them so that is sort of the setting that we're coming into now that they're like in a period of peace um something happened that is threatening that peace which involves her sister elara who is older than her she wants to become a soldier for the country but something happens to her and now she is forced to go behind enemy lines and Farron is having to find ways to rescue her so far i am really enjoying the book i think there was a lot of good work done on the world building and it's easy to understand the characters are distinct there's like some very interesting political things going on that i'm very interested in it kind of reminds me of fireborn and how everything is being set up and how there is this um more political aspect to it rather than just the focus on the dragons because there are dragons in this book and yes they can talk to their bonded a la fourth wing if that is important for you to know <laughs> um, but yeah i'm enjoying it i especially love the themes regarding the colonizer colonize i guess dynamic um, especially because i am a filipino which means we have had our fair share of being colonized we've been colonized by the spaniards for 333 years and then the japanese and then the americans so we have a lot of remnants from those times like in our education in our language and the names of our streets in our religion a lot of that was really affected by our colonizers and there was this part here that i tabbed that talked about language um so elara's sister was i guess complaining to her aunt because her aunt wants her to stop learning langlish or is that the name yeah i think langlish which is the language of langley which is their colonizer and her aunt said here that being forced to learn the language of your oppressors is an oppression of the mind they rewrite your history when you're too young to know what you're giving away and before you know it it's too late to reclaim what you've lost which is so relatable because look at me i'm speaking in english this is not my native language but i speak english better than i do straight filipino which is our native language i mean obviously if in a day-to-day -day conversation i use filipino but i 
cannot speak in straight Filipino all the time. Like it's mentally draining because I, I'm not used to it. I'm more used to speaking in English, which is because of our education system. I think for most countries, their subjects are taught in their native language and then they would probably have like an English class or English course. But for us, all of our subjects are taught in English and then we have a Filipino course, which is kind of weird now that, you know, I'm much older, but that is just how it's been. Like, I do not know how to speak about all of the different like subjects like physics, mathematics. I don't know how to talk about those in my native language. It would be so difficult, which is kind of sad. And that is also why one of my goals is to just keep reading books that are written purely in Filipino. I'm not very good at that yet. <laughs> um, that is a lot harder for me to do than reading in English, which is sad. That's just how it is because we've been colonized. Um, from a very young age, we are taught that English is something that you have to learn because it will give you an edge. Like it's more important than learning Filipino because English will get you ahead in life, will get you further in life. So that's just something that has been taught to us again and again when we were younger. Now everyone just take it as the truth and that is just sad but the reality so that is something that I was really able to relate to and there's a lot of those themes in this book and I'm enjoying that so far really good I am this far in I will still continue reading tonight but I think I might stop after the sprints because I do need to do a lot of laundry and yeah that is my update for so let them burn by Camilla Cole <laughs> It is 7? Is it 7? Yeah, it's 7.15 in the morning and last night I fell asleep. Um, I was supposed to do laundry but I fell asleep so never mind, we'll do that today. Um, I just got coffee delivered as well as some breakfast because we don't have drinking water like we ran out so we need to pick that up today as well. So I couldn't make my coffee. Um, but yeah, today I'm just gonna spend some time reading this morning while I'm having my breakfast. And then I am gonna shower, get the laundry ready, clean up around the kitchen, and then maybe read some more uh, while I wait for Nico to wake up so we can go to the laundry place. Um, but yeah, that is the plan. Where am I? I am this far into So Let Them Burn. I'm hoping to get at least two-thirds of the way through, which is probably around 250 or 220 pages. That's my goal for today. But then I also want to start um, the next book at some point, which is the book that can cure slums. I haven't yet done the prompt for the lore quest. I need to watch a sci-fi or romance movie or tv show i'm gonna watch queen of tears which is a new k-drama with kim so hyun i am confident that i could get at least two-thirds of this but i just don't know if i could get to any other books because i do have a bunch of editing to do today for a video that's gonna go up tomorrow so yeah let's see uh, what the day has in store for us but for now i'm just gonna read while i'm drinking my coffee I was gonna start reading a thriller for my third class, but I wasn't really in the mood for it, so I thought that's kind of counterproductive. I should be reading a book that I'm in the mood for because that's what's gonna cure slump. I know that I have a graphic novel that I've already borrowed from the library and I thought I'd just read it because it's super cute, gonna be super fast to read as well. 
um i am gonna read the two volumes that are available right now just so that you know it's not a super short book because it is i think around 164 pages um and it's just super cute i really love the art style it's very cozy fairy tale vibe so yeah i'm gonna read garlic and the vampire by brie paulson and garlic and the witch which is the second volume so that's gonna replace my book for the restoration class I just finished reading Garlic and the Vampire and Garlic and the Witch by Brie Paulson. This one, and then the other one's Garlic and the Witch. Why is this the cutest thing I've ever read? Like, it's so cute. Um, I love how little Miss Garlic here is just a bundle, a bulb of anxiety. And she's just trying her best, and it's so cute. And all of the like concept of there's being vampires, a witch, how witches are created, and all of them just gardening and selling like garlic. It's a gardener and she sells garlic as well in the market. So that's kind of like weird but funny as well. I don't know, it's just so cute and so adorable. That was a super quick read. I think I spent 20 minutes on both of the volumes and yeah that is gonna be for my restoration prompt definitely a graphic novel that can cure slums because that was just so cute and i just feel so good after reading that so now i'm probably gonna continue reading my book for the one with the yellow title pretty good day pretty chill as well so yeah I'm gonna keep reading or no i'm gonna edit first and then i'm gonna read after that but yeah this is so cute you can just spend like 10 minutes reading this one and garlic and the witch best 10 minutes ever good morning from my somewhat messy desk um just having my usual coffee getting some reading done but also my new baby i'm still charging her so um, I haven't really had a chance to actually test it. Well, I did test it, but not, you know, to actually film a clip. Just to like say hi, hello. Um, but here's my new baby. So I got the Hero 12 and I got it with the Media Mod um, and the like tripod thing. It's the Creator Bundle. And what I really like about this is that it's tiny. This is even tinier if I remove the Media Mod, but it has a mic. And I have tested the mic and it sounds decent, it sounds pretty good, um, especially if I am outside and things are windy. And I like that it's so discreet, but I also like that I have the option of using this one as a stand and yeah, I'm just so excited. I know I look rough, but I want to talk to you in face to face, no? Um, so I am at page 228 in so let them burn. My goal right now is to read the certain point where I can finish a book during reading sprints later with Pam from Pam Shenanigans. I usually read about one page per minute. So our sprints, we read 20 for 25 minutes for four sprints. So that is 100 minutes. So the goal is to leave 100 pages. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the goal is to read until I only have like 100 pages left so I can finish it in sprints later so that would be like super fun to finish a book in sprints so yeah that is the goal i'm currently at 229 i think this book is 386 pages long so i need to get to 286 and i think that's doable that's only like 57 pages so So of course, I'm also watching Jan Agaton. I can't watch and read at the same time, so I just read a couple of chapters and then I watch a couple of minutes. I don't know why, but yeah, that's how my brain works. I am 54 pages into Love Redesigned. This is what I'm going to be reading for the rest of this vlog. The rest of this vlog being until tomorrow morning. I think I'm going to end this vlog. If I forget in the morning, then... Hi everyone. So I am trying out the new camera and um it is so tiny and i love it that i could just place it on top of things and it still has a wide angle view and hopefully the audio is okay i am at page 252 of um so let them burn we are in the middle of the whole exploration 
figuring things out and things are ramping up slowly. I'm pretty sure this is gonna be a series. Um, it seems like there's a lot of setup happening here for something big to happen in the future. I just hope that the ending of this book is fun and exciting. I'm just gonna have to do some chores and then I'll come back to this in a bit. Okay, I did it. It is now 1.27 in the afternoon and I am at page 287, which means I have exactly 100 pages left before finishing So Let Them Burn by Camilla Cole. Um, it is getting juicy. Something happened that, that was just so glossed over, but I feel like it's gonna be pretty big. I feel like it's gonna play a really big part towards the end. And I don't know, I just got the feeling that you just know that this thing that um, Farron did is just gonna have really bad consequences later. I, I don't know, I just feel it. Um, I hope that's not true, but that's how I'm feeling right now. I am gonna take a break from reading now and gonna focus on doing a little bit of computer work because I do have to do a couple of design stuff. I have to design a bookmark and a couple of packaging things for work because I am leading the book club at work and we're gonna do a kind of like a club fair to try and recruit members on Tuesday so I need to design a couple of like freebies for that so I'm gonna design a bookmark and packaging stuff for treats and snacks that we're giving away. So yeah, that is something I need to do today, but definitely going to be reading more. And when I finish this, I will have completed all of the books that I needed to read for the Eldia Excavationist Calling, which is amazing. Um, I don't think I've ever finished my callings within the actual month of April. So that is a good thing. Um, but for now, taking a break, I'm going to go to Sinega. I'm going to show you. Hold on, let me show you my Sinega. Okay. So it's, I'm still boiling it to get the flavors in um, and I still haven't put in the kangkong. What's kangkong in English? Water spinach, I think it's what it is. It's kind of like spinach, but it's not as bitter. So I still need to put that, but I'm going to wait a bit because that cooks really fast. So I usually put it at the very, very end. So yeah, it's just this sour soup with some green, I don't know what to call this. They're not super spicy chili, but they add some kick. And then some radish in there, beef, onions, and yeah, obviously the vegetable. So usually there's gonna be string beans here, but I'm not really a big fan of string beans. So I didn't add that um, to this one, but yeah, super good. Soup, especially if you're feeling a bit sick. Love that too. So I'm just gonna add this in a bit and then it will be done. I have been looking around the internet, hopping on Reddit threads, trying to find a book for the Lord Quest. Um I came across this graphic novel which looks like this. It's um Die by Gillen, Hans and Gauss. So I think Gillen wrote it. I'm not quite sure, but yeah. This is the cover, and this cover looks so familiar to me. I feel like I've seen it in someone's vlog. I'm actually thinking it's G, G's vlog or something. I'm not quite sure, but uh, I don't know. I, I've seen this cover, and the thing that got me while I was scrolling through the thread is that this was pitch as a goth Jumanji, and I love Jumanji. That's one of my favorite films and it scared me to death when I was a kid. Um, oh, I wanted to have the Jumanji board game for a long time just because I love how it looks um, but I'm scared of you know what happens with a board game. But anyway, I saw this and I thought hmm, maybe I could read this one. I think there are five volumes and it's 188 page for the first volume. I was able to borrow the first four volumes from the library so I could read this and progress with the lore quest. Finished designing our bookmark. Oh, I'm not going to zoom out because the logo of my work is actually at the bottom. 
um, but it's just like a, I guess a library card, and then instead of actual book names, I put in different genres. Obviously, I put in Filipino lit at the very top. Um, but yeah, this is gonna be the bookmark. Someone else is gonna print it. I am at page 354 or 355, which is like 30 pages away from finishing this book. And I just know that it's gonna end on a pretty big cliffhanger just because of where we are in the story. We're still doing sprints. Um, this is the third sprint, so I'm definitely gonna be finishing it in this one. So. Finish reading So Let Them Burn by Camila Cole. And I need to stew in my thoughts first before I give it a rating. Now that we still have one more sprint, I can read for the lore side quest. And I need to read a book with a door on the cover or in the title. I don't want this to be a super long book because I have so many books that I need to read already. And I remembered that there's this super viral like short romance that went super popular last year and it's this one, Unhinge, and it's an erotica door romance where basically the main character falls in love, in lust with a door, like a literal door who turns into a man at some point. I don't know what's going on, but this is literally a door on the cover. So it counts and it's only 71 pages and it's free on KU. So I think I'm going to read it. I am going to read it. So pray for me, I suppose. Let's do a quick recap of all the books that I read for this vlog and I guess to close off Magical Readathon as well. The first book that I read here is actually So Let Them Burn by Camilla Cole. I read this throughout the entire vlog. It took me a while to finish it and honestly I was a little bit disappointed by it. Um, I did enjoy all of the themes that were in here. You've got the political intrigue with the different warring countries and the colonizer colonized dynamic and then obviously you've got this different magic systems from different countries one country is like based on dragons while the other one is based more on like ancestral power and energy and it's always intriguing to me whenever i read about different kinds of magic system coexisting into like one universe and then also you have this idea of dragons in general you know dragon academies which is always interesting but unfortunately this book fell short for me mostly because the way the story has been written and the development of the characters all of the characters here had something going for them but they eventually all fell flat they weren't really developed as well as i hope they would be i felt like we were given character sheets of what each character should be like should feel like but it didn't really show in the actual text of the book and eventually all of them just felt really this surface level character which is sad because I we did have a really good foundation to have amazing character dynamic another thing that I didn't like is the way that the story was told felt very boring like I know that there was a lot happening especially towards the ending in the last like 50 pages of the book. I know that there was a lot of action going on. You've got dragons, you've got drakes which are basically mechanical dragons. You've got people wielding power of the dragons, people wielding power of their ancestors. A new war is starting up and just lots of exciting things happening but i didn't feel all of that excitement from reading the book when the book ended i'm like oh okay fine that's the ending okay got it it was supposed to be a very impactful and emotional ending and it's supposed to make you excited for what's to come but it didn't really do that for me um i'm giving this one three stars very middle of the road just because i 
it did have a lot of the themes that I normally enjoy in fantasy books but the execution just really fell flat for me I will still be reading the sequel just because I'm a completionist and I want to read sequels the books that I start I don't know maybe my mind will change later on but for now I guess I'm reading it um so yeah that is so let them burn by Camilla Cole and then for the last prompt which is to read a book that's in Cure Slums I read two graphic novels which is Garlic and the Vampire and Garlic and the Witch by B. Paulson this two graphic novels are just so cute so adorable and best 20 minutes of my life <laughs> um i just had a lot of fun reading them it's a very light-hearted but still gonna tug at your heartstrings kind of story and definitely something that anyone can derive enjoyment from so i highly recommend that you read it i don't want to say anything about it because it's a very simple story and i just find the illustrations so cute it's very fairy tale-esque and if you enjoy that kind of illustration definitely um read this graphic novel super quick read but also super enjoyable so i'm glad that i read that and with that i have completed the elder excavationist calling for spring equinox so we will revisit these callings in august to finish them off um but now let's talk about the rest of the books i read for the lore quest i started it off by reading Threads That Bind by Kika Hatsupolu. So this is also a fantasy novel and I was very intrigued by this one. The magic system in this book was so interesting to me. It is based on Greek mythology and I think other mythologies as well. But it wasn't as straightforward as other, you know, mythology based books. I enjoyed how the manifestation of the powers and the abilities of the Greek gods were you know passed down towards like kind of like groups of children so you've got sisters like triplets twins depending on which god you are descended from so our main character Ayo is Moira born and they're descended from the fates so the fates are these three gods and essentially that meant all of the descendants come in three so there's like triplet not triplets but just you know three children from one mother and they all have the different powers and different sort of manifestations but all of them had the theme of threads but this is just for my report if you've got this i forget the name of the god but anyway they're concerned with like seeing the past and the future so they come in like twos so one sibling sees the future one sibling sees the past i find that so interesting but with that said it is very complex in terms of like there's so many different kinds of other born is what they're called and i wish this book had some sort of like glossary to like refresh my mind what each other born does because there's so many and they're all interesting and they're all very much integrated into the world of this book but yeah i could e so easily forget something and that kind of ruins the enjoyment for me because then i would have to go back and you know remember okay what are these people again what do they do again and why could they do this thing that they just did the plot itself is very interesting it had a lot of mystery elements to it we're trying to figure out this um sinister plot that seems to be going on in their world and there's this bigger picture plot that's also happening it has a little bit of like political undertones but not a lot really and that was enjoyable but i do think that some of my enjoyment was dampened by my annoyance by our main character um i think this is just my pet peeve in books when characters are described as the best of something the best writer the best detective the best spy the best this but then when you read the book their actions kind of betray that they don't act like they are the best you know i feel like that's definitely the case for this book she was described as this amazing best private detective in all of Alante and she did not feel like that the way that she went about you know trying to figure out the mystery in this book just felt very amateur felt like she was just flying by the seat of her pants and not really you know doing smart things <laughs> I don't know I just find that very weird I wish she had a little bit more finesse in how she does things especially since she's touted as this best private detective 
and I think that really soured my enjoyment of the book and the subtle romance aspect in this book was okay it wasn't really a big part of a story which is fine by me but i did not have any kind of like butterflies with them i think it's because they didn't really have good banter they had a lot of this dad jokes going around and they're kind of joking how oh, I'm so funny. No, you're not funny. and it wasn't really doing anything for me so i don't really care for the relationship here i wish it wasn't in here maybe it would have worked better if they were just like really good friends who kind of get each other and maybe later down the road it could be a romance like maybe the third book or something this is a series i am reading the sequel just because that's who i am and um the ending itself it was interesting because it did bring together all of the different fantasy elements and different magic systems in here and it brought a little bit of like history a little bit of politics a little bit of the magic into just one big plot which is quite intriguing but i do think it was kind of dumped at us towards the end um rather than us discovering it throughout the book because like i said our main character not really the best detective i would say i'm giving this 3.75 just really because i enjoyed the different magic system and i want to read more of that so yeah threads that fine by kika hatsipolu this is the first book that i read for the lore quest now following this i needed to read a book with portal magic so i read die by karen gillen this is a graphic novel and i was really intrigued by this because of the concept of it it's essentially pitched as this goth jumanji right so you've got this group of friends and they all got together to play a tabletop role-playing game much like D&D. but when they started playing they get sucked into the world of the game and essentially had to live out their characters to try and get out of the game. Fast forward, I think five years later, we find out that they were actually missing in the real world, and when they got back to the real world, they were missing one person. <laughs> so they were six, and now they're only five, and that has been eating at their conscience day by day, and 20 years has passed since then, and they're still traumatized, they can't look at a die. One day, something happens that kind of like prompts them to go back into that world to try and save the friend that they lost when they went back in the real world and they find out that he's now a villain <laughs> so that is the i guess the premise of the book and we just follow them and their different role-playing characters and their different you know skills abilities as they try to save their friends slash get out of this magical world that they're in so it was really fun and interesting the art style is gorgeous like i did not expect like fully detailed rendered um artworks for every single page which was fun to see and admire i was really just admiring the artwork it was however a little bit difficult to follow i think because the story and the writing uses a lot of lingo from tabletop role-playing games so if you were you know someone who's familiar with DD &D and other role-playing games it would probably be so easy for you to understand everything that's going on but for me a lot of the things and the tropes i guess kind of just went over my head just like they would make some jokes where it's like oh this is the this kind of trope moment like i guess if in the romance book it would be like this is the one bed only trope or this is the it was a bet all along trope it was kind of like that but with role-playing games slash dnd tropes and i don't know those tropes but i guess if you are familiar with those it would be a much more enjoyable read so yeah i'm giving this one four stars i will probably continue it just because it's on my library and the artwork is really gorgeous and i am curious to find out if they end up actually you know succeeding in their quest and then the next book i read for this prompt is a bit unhinged <laughs> i needed to read a book with a door on the cover in the title and of course i read unhinged by vera valentine i know that this book went kind of viral last year i kept seeing it around which is why this was the first book that popped into my head when i saw the prompt and it worked out well because it, this was only 71 pages so that was perfect for me this book honestly was a disappointment i was expecting a lot more not really depraved but just interesting and entertaining story but this was a bit vanilla given the premise of a woman falling in love with the door basically it could have been more but it just wasn't the first 20 pages are the most interesting because you've got this sentient door monologuing about this woman and you know professing his 
essentially love for her and obviously you've got the scenes with you know erotica scenes with a door and a woman um but aside from that it really just was so basic and i guess it was kind of cute um there were mystery elements to it greek god elements <laughs> funnily enough but aside from that it was just really basic and it was kind of boring towards the end actually um so i gave this one 1.5 stars i felt like it could have been more funny but it just wasn't and yeah i don't know <laughs> 1.5 stars um that is door or no that is unhinged by vera valentine and those are all the books that i read for this vlog i actually read one more book for the lore quest to finish that off but it's not in this vlog so i'm gonna close off this video and close off magical readathon so happy that i managed to read all of the books within the actual month of the readathon i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope maybe you found a book that you want to read but if not, let me know in the comments which book you love the most or enjoyed the most from this month. And I will see you again in the next video. Bye!